Are you a professional who wants to become a more effective leader? Then get ready for daily tips from the coach with the experience and inspiration to help you succeed in any leadership situation. You're listening to the Meeting Leadership Podcast with Gordon Shepard. Welcome to the Meeting Leadership Podcast. My name is Gordon Shepard. It's great to have you here. It's great to have the type of people like you who want to up their leadership game. And today, if I could describe sort of the theme of today's episode, it would have to be how to get gritty as a leader. Because today, we're going to talk about why leaders need managerial courage. I love this topic. It's a great interview with Kevin Whalen. Kevin is a leadership and productivity expert. He's with Nate, which is the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology here in Edmonton, Alberta. And the interview going along with him, it's short, but you're going to pick up some really important points that you can take forward to use with your team today. And I'm not going to hold back another second. So here's the interview with Kevin Whalen. Kevin, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, Gordon. Good to be back. It's great to have you here. We know that in episode 10, you provided a ton of value for the audience. And really, I hope a lot of people get back and check that one out as well. But today, um, for the people that haven't met you yet, give us a second here, a little bit about yourself so they can understand kind of who you are and where you come from. Sure. Uh, My name is Kevin Whalen. I'm an instructor at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. Uh, We work in continuing education and specifically in in our department, we focus on teaching leadership, project management, Lean Six Sigma, uh, any sort of productivity improvement courses that we can come up with, operations management, uh, quality management, all of those sorts of things. And the one comment I'll make about the program that I'm aware of over at Nate is that uh, the rubber hits the road there. This is where they get their hands messy, they get people trained up, and the people are hitting industry at the highest possible level because of instructors like Kevin. So Kevin, good to have you back here on the show. Today, it's a topic that you named for me uh, in a way in our pre-interview that I really wanted them to bring forward. Now, the topic is why leaders need managerial courage. And you said managerial courage, and that was, for me, like a lightning bolt. So I want really to convey what this is, what you mean by this to the audience. What is managerial courage? Managerial courage is a characteristic of a leader, and it it really, really ties in with what we already talked about in establishing trust. Generally, people want leaders in their organizations that have integrity. And, And by integrity, we mean leaders that they trust, that they respect, and they admire. And having the courage to make the right decisions or even just make a decision uh, along the way and do the right thing when it's the right thing to do, for sure. Uh, Those sorts of things, uh, they go a long way to developing your integrity with your team. I can see the value in this in terms of impact, not just on people, but on projects themselves. When you go to teach managerial courage, how do you break that down for people? Is there kind of a three-step process or something like that? How do you actually, what steps do you teach people to put this in place? Yeah, well, one of the first things we have to say is, you know, you have to be honest with your staff. You have to be truthful and you have to show your own uh, shortcomings when you have them and and admit to them. But at the same time, you you know, having that truth and honesty uh, and being able to express that truth. And that also means sometimes even when it's not popular is very important. Some people will avoid certain topics out of a fear of conflict. And we may be fearful sometimes to speak up in a meeting because it, maybe it appears that the group wants to go a certain direction. And then we find out after the meeting that everyone wanted to go along with the idea because the boss was promoting it. But truthfully, if you had had the, the courage to stand up and, and speak out against it, uh, it could have actually gone a very different way. What a great gift to give to your students, especially for young people, to try and you know, get this attitude into their work experience you know, immediately. And what's sort of the next step that you teach in this process? Now, one of the other things we talk about is also having the courage to adhere to standards. I've seen many times over the years, right, there's, there's that feeling that you can bend the rules on a standard that you don't necessarily agree with because you don't find it important. And can you give me an example? Sure. Uh, let's say an example was, uh, especially over the years in the oil and gas industry, uh, you know, paperwork has become much more important over time than it used to be. And, and for good reason. Uh, however, some of the people felt that maybe this wasn't uh, 
wasn't important to them. And they didn't necessarily have the courage to speak up and say, no, this is the right way of doing it. A story I can think of is, say, an oil field service people would you know, be going out to a job site. It might take them five, six hours one way just to get to location. And uh, with all of the confidence and, dare I say, arrogance sometimes, moving, going out to a job site, thinking full well that they've got the job in hand and then getting to location and finding out that actually there's a bunch of things they missed because they didn't fill in the paperwork and check the proper boxes to begin with. What, I've seen it many times. What a disaster. That is such a waste of time. It's such, again, from a productivity standpoint, from their standpoint. So then what are they going to drive back six hours, drive another six hours out to get just one job done? That's a nightmare. Well, quite often they would send out what's called a hotshot truck to send the part out, More ex- which is expensive. More expense, exactly. Oh, my goodness. And in terms of the process, what's the final thing that you want people to really know when it comes to managerial courage? Well, one of the other things that we find is that once you have your employees oriented, trained, they know what they're supposed to do, you've hired them for a reason, have the courage to show faith in your team members to do their jobs. Make certain that you spend the time to assess the team's skills and abilities and make certain that they're in their correct roles. And after that, you're not managing anymore. Now you're leading. You give them tasks, you give them deadlines, and assume that they will succeed. I absolutely agree. And when I remember back to the days that I spent in the corporate world when that micromanagement would occur, it drove me absolutely nuts. It took quite a while, I remember, when I moved from employee to manager to learn how to to lead like the way you've described, as opposed to micromanaging. And so much of that is really about letting go. Absolutely. One more point I'd like to make, and it's because you spoke to it. It's a very good point, Gord, is that quite often how we learn to manage is by example. So what were the examples that were role modeled for us? And if they were poor examples, we need to change that so that we are a better role model for our employees. I couldn't agree more, and I wish we had all day. I'm just going to do a quick recap here and see if I can remember the three key points that we want the audience to remember from this terrific interview. One, be truthful. Two, adhere to standards. And the third part is have faith and the courage to have faith in the people that you've hired to do their job. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? I would, but we'd be here all day, Gordon. Thank you so much again for being on the show. I hope to get you back again in the future. This is highly valuable material. I know that people listening right now are going to get a lot from it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Gord. Appreciate it. Well, my big takeaway from that interview, it's about letting go, getting out of people's way and letting them do their job. And if it takes managerial courage to do that, I hope all of us can learn how to do that from the interview that we just heard with Kevin Whalen. If you want more wisdom from Kevin Whalen, check out episode 10 of the Meeting Leadership Podcast by going to meetingleadershipinc.com slash 10. And I also want to let you know that this episode of the Meeting Leadership Podcast is brought to you by the Meeting Leadership Academy. There you're going to find a lot of practical information, but more importantly, the inspiration that you need to become an outstanding leader. Visit meetingleadershipinc.com slash academy to learn more. And as always, Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Meeting Leadership Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Meeting Leadership Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more strategies to help you become an outstanding leader. And don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you fresh content every day. We'll see you tomorrow, right here on the Meeting Leadership Podcast. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end.